Hi everyone, I'm Erin Thompson of Everyday Expressions. Today I'm excited to join the Greetery and share a tutorial on how I created a rusted weathered effect using the tub filler die from the new Urban Jungle Collection. I'm going to begin by sharing the simple method I use to ink the greenery and the tub dies. For the foliage, I like to create two different shades of green panels. The first is a lighter green with more of a yellow base. I begin by smushing a light yellow water-based dye ink onto a non-porous mat. Spritz with water and then gently dab a small sheet of inexpensive watercolor paper around in the ink. I dry between layers using a heat gun. The best effect is created by repeating the process several times. I build by adding a darker shade of green as the process evolves. Remember to dry between layers. As Tim Holtz taught me, wet on wet blends and wet on dry layers. And I love the organic effect by kind of smushing and rubbing this card in and grabbing all those little droplets of color. Once I'm happy with all of the colors and layers and depth in this panel, I will give it a final little dry and then spritz a little water, take a paper towel, lift it up, and then dry it one more time. Now you see I'm taking a spray stain, this is just a distressed green color, taking a paintbrush, adding maybe a little bit of water to dampen it, and then giving it a few more final splatters of color. Add a little bit of water, flip it over, it kind of smushes out those final droplets. See the interest that adds? Now, I take these two panels, and I decided that my lighter green, I lost some of the vibrancy of the yellows, so I pull out that ink pad and ink blend some color back into that to just brighten it up. Do not be afraid to ink blend in some layers over your inked panel. You will not contaminate pads. It won't affect them in any way. You're still using the same dye ink formula. See how much brighter that, that light green one looks now? I really like the depth of adding a little bit of yellow adds to green foliage. Aren't these pretty? The, I think the panels just come out so lovely. Now I'm moving on to the tub. I use a light blue and a, like a medium gray, put both colors on the mat, spritz them with water, and then start smushing that watercolor paper around. I like the galvanized tinny look that you achieve when you mix the blue and the gray together. Once again, I follow the same process. I will ink it up, give it a little dry, then pat it back in the ink again, and I keep going until I'm happy with this effect. The important thing to remember in, in the ink smushing process is to give it a little dry in between layers. Finally, you see all three panels there, and I think they're just so pretty. So then I die cut the foliage, the tub filler foliage, from the panels, and I like to die cut two, both the lighter green and then layer it with the darker green. And by layering the two pieces, you just achieve a more full kind of... Um, shadows and layered effect. Super simple. Just move one kind of to the side so it's a little bit shadowed and they're ready to go. Now what you see here is I want you to remember we've created a big panel so I do not want to lose any of that foliage. I might want to use some bits and pieces and trim them apart and add them into this or save them for maybe the greenhouse dye or for another card later. So definitely use up all the little areas you can, die cut little parts of the, the die, and then save those in the pocket with your die to use at a later time. So what I'm doing here is I want you to know if ink smushing is not for you, then I'm just 
adding a few frames in here of how I would go about ink blending this die cut piece. I die cut the tub filler die from, this is just a Hammer Mill 100 pound cardstock. I'm using probably the same green ink colors and I leave it, I leave the die cut in the negative piece of paper and it makes it much easier to ink blend over all of those delicate little pieces. I start in with a larger brush and then I go in and add some shading with a smaller blender brush. Now you can see I've moved on to the tub. I start with a gray color, blend it around. There's no rhyme or reason to this. Make sure you don't forget the handles. And by the way, I left the little handles connected um, when you receive the tub. The handles are connected. It's all one die piece. You could clip those apart if you wanted to, but I know myself and I would lose them. So I like to leave it connected. I cut it out all in one piece and then um, I, have a, I have to just make sure I don't lose the little die cut pieces before I create my card. So I started with a couple of gray colors and now I've gone in with a light blue and I'm just inking with the blending brushes. Now I go in with a smaller one to give it more of a precise shading here and there, but there really, there is no specific rhyme or reason, just where it might be more shaded or weathered. And the whole reason I added this in is just so that you remember if you're not an ink smushing person, then do a little bit of ink blending. You could also start with a colored cardstock, for instance, a light color, a light blue or a light gray and greens for the foliage and begin with colored cardstock and then just do a little bit of ink blending and then you'd be finished. It's just what you like to do, what you enjoy doing and what works for your card. Super simple ink blending technique. I just thought I would share that here too. So pretty, I love this tub and the foliage dye. Next you can see I'm just taking a brown ink with a blender pen and coloring the little wooden part of those handles. I decided that I couldn't leave the greenery alone and wanted to add one more bit of interest by splattering some shimmer paints onto these. So I put them in the splat box, added the ink, and then dried it. You can add pearlescent paints, the shimmer sprays, whatever you like, but I really love the effect. Now we're finally moving on to the true technique of this tutorial, the rusted effect of the tub. You are going to be amazed at how simple this actually is. I take my embossing ink pad, dab it around the die cut tub, and then I used crusty copper from Wow Embossing Powder. You can use any kind of metallic that you like, but I like that this is a kind of a mixed media embossing powder and it has a little bit of texture and it's not a super, super shiny metallic copper. You can see after dabbing the ink around, it covers most of the tub. Do not worry, that's okay. I take a dry, kind of cheaper watercolor brush and I start gently removing excess powder from where I do not want it. And I will leave it in areas that I think a tub might naturally rust or look aged, brush a lot of it off from the center, but I still leave little specks here and there. I would never want to use an embossing uh, or an anti-static tool on this piece because I like all of the little extra bits and pieces that stay on the tub. Once I'm happy with what I've removed, then I start heating. And this is definitely a lesson in patience. You will see, here I've done it just like we normally would to heat emboss. It's shiny. I want you to see what happens if you keep going. Did you know that you can actually burn embossing powder? If you're like most of us, you have made that mistake before, and you know as soon as you've done it 
the embossing powder actually turns very dull. That's actually what I want to happen with this crusty copper embossing powder. So you can see I've actually burned the left side and left the right side there for you to see the difference. It turns the shininess to a dull, matte, rusted look. And I think that's fantastic for this tub. That's exactly what I wanted. If that look is not for you, then definitely just heat it and melt it to the normal point where it's still shiny and pretty. But I kept going until it literally turned a dull color. Don't worry, your paper will also start to turn color. If it starts to smoke, stop. You do not want to burn your paper. But you um, it's a fine line. And then don't forget to emboss your little handles and adhere them to the tub. I love to use my reverse tweezers for this and then pinch it on there to just hold it until they're secure. And there you go. How cute is that rusted tub? So it's super simple now. Um, I just take my, my greenery and I add some glue and adhere it to the back of the tub. Now to finish my card, I die cut a piece of white hammer mill paper using the woven cane background die, adhered it to a Nina Desert Storm card base, added my um, tub to it, adhered everything, and then I used the sentiments, the little label stamp and cut combo, and used the um, crusty copper to stamp and heat emboss the frame. I love this, how versatile this little stamp and sentiment set is. So many pretty sentiments. And I love that you can use one big one or you can actually move it up and then there's room to add the smaller uh, little note or sentiment to the larger. And here that's exactly what I did. I used the crusty copper and then just to get the detail in the smaller sentiment, I used a brown ink and stamped that underneath the thank you. Die cut that. And then I added it to my tub and finished it with those lovely little floral clay pieces from the garden bits. Added it all together. I like to pop things up with a little bit of foam tape for dimension. Curl up the little edges of your foliage to give it even more movement. And I don't adhere everything. I just add little drops here and there. I pop the sentiment up with a little bit of foam tape in the middle of the tub. Adhere some flowers in different colors using the pinks, the oranges, yellows, the little white bits. How cute is that tub and filler die paired with the woven cane background? Thank you so much for joining me today and thank you to the Greetery for allowing me to join in their YouTube channel and share this tutorial.